Hello and welcome to today's webinar. My name is Truthy Raglan and I'm the Program Analyst for the Global Mental Health Program here at GCC. Today we're going to go through the FLUX application process for our SEED call, a Global Mental Health Grand Challenge, Mental Health and Wellbeing of Young People, Round 1. So all of this information can be found in our RFP as well as our website. So you can always look there for any of this information, but hopefully some of these images help you to better understand how the application process works. You must apply to the Flux portal, which is our application portal, gcc.flux.io. We cannot accept applications via email. We can only accept applications that come through the Flux portal. So when you go to the portal homepage, you will see the screen that you see on the right hand side. If you applied for any GCC funding in the past, you should already have an account and you can enter those login details. If you've forgotten your password, there's a link below that will allow you to reset. If you are new to applying for GCC funding, please click on the link that says create an account now and you will be redirected to a page where you will need to input some basic details. Once you've submitted, you should get your login details after approximately one business day. If you do not receive that information within a day or two, please reach out to us so that we can resend or help troubleshoot as needed. Once you log in and you go to the welcome tab, you will see on the left hand side of the page um, all the current open calls. When you scroll to the global mental health section, you should see a button that says start your global mental health application. Once you click on that, you will open an application for your innovation. Please note that you can save the application at any time and return to it until, it is, until you are satisfied it is complete. If you choose to come back to the application, you'll be able to access it under drafts. When you click on the draft, you will have to click on the edit button on the top right hand corner of the screen and this will allow you to continue working on it. Once you have fully completed your application, please hit save and then hit submit. If it's just saved, it won't be submitted, and so we won't be able to review your application. So again, please be sure to hit save and then submit to ensure that we receive it. Once you submit, you will no longer be able to edit, so please take care when completing the form. Next, I'm gonna go through the different sections of the application. The first section is the project summary. Please note that while we ask you to complete the full project application prior to submitting, only the project summary, the four questions outlined here, will, will be reviewed in the first stage of the evaluation process. This is the innovation screen. At this stage, applications will be scored based on the innovation screen criteria described in the RFP to determine if they will proceed to the next stage of review. In the past, up to 70% of applications have been rejected at the initial innovation screen. Therefore, it is crucial that the project summary clearly describes the innovation. Here we ask innovators to focus on the following questions. What is the problem addressed by your innovation? What is your proposed innovation? What are the current approaches to the problem and how will your innovation address it more effectively? And how is your innovation relevant to youth in low or middle income countries? Strong applications will define the specific context, the specific problem in the context of the proposed innovation, have a clear articulation of the proposed idea or project, explain why the proposed idea is novel and will be more than an incremental improvement over current approaches, and clearly address and demonstrate relevance to the focus areas. In the next section, we are looking for more details about the project team. The project lead and team should possess the relevant experience, leadership, and commitment in developing, implementing, and scaling solutions in global mental health. For this funding call, youth-led teams are those who are 35 and under, However, our target beneficiaries are those aged 10 to 24. There's no eligibility criteria to see if you've been around for a certain number of years or if you have a certain experience with a grant of a similar amount. This is your opportunity to, to explain why you and your team are the best position to lead mental health innovations in your target areas. One note about the project lead, a project lead can only be listed on one project. Therefore, if you'll be leading a project, you cannot collaborate on others. If an institution wishes to submit multiple proposals, they must use different leads. And more information about this can be found on our website and on the RFP. Strong applications will include some background information about the institution, include information on the partners um, and collaborators of the proposed project, and will explain what the specific roles or contributions will be and how these contributions help to increase the likelihood of success. This section looks at whether proposed ideas is innovative, bold, and different than current approaches. 
We are also looking for how you integrate the three pillars that are central to our work of scientific technological innovation, social innovation, and business innovation. Strong applications will clearly explain what is innovative, different, bold, creative about the proposal, explain your plan for addressing the social and business aspects that are required to make this innovation successful, um, and that can include business planning, community engagement, policymaker engagement, understanding end user demand, distribution, integration within multiple like, existing platforms, et cetera. So in this section, we're looking at the following questions. Describe and quantify the issue impacting youth that you will address and provide information that outlines the mental health need, particularly in the context in which you plan to implement. So it may be that, you know, 30% of young people have um, self-identified as having depression, so that may be the issue. And, you know, how does it fit into the mental health need of the context? So it may be that, you know, in your area, there's not a lot of mental health services, and that is the issue they're planning to address. Please include citations or references um, in section one. Uh, there's no specific um, formatting for citations, just choose one that you're comfortable with and please be um, consistent. Explain your innovation and how it has a potential to fund fundamentally transform mental health and well-being outcomes for youth. Explain how is your innovation different from other approaches to the same problem, including previously funded grand challenges projects. GCC reserves the right to not fund any proposals too similar to those previously funded. So we won't fund the same innovator to the same program somewhere else at the seed level, unless sufficiently demonstrating um, adaptation to a new context. Please refer to our website for a full list of projects that we've funded in the past. Um, question four asks you to please describe how you will engage stakeholders, particularly young people with lived experience in the design, implementation, and evaluation of the innovation. Innovators are expected to meaningfully engage young people throughout this whole process. There's no set criteria for this or set way rather, but it's up to the applicant to demonstrate this in their applications. And finally, please describe how your innovation applies integrated innovation, that is the integration of scientific, technological, social, and business innovation. For example, if your idea is based on a technological development, please explain your plan for addressing the social and business aspects that are required to bring this innovation to scale. Next, the innovation will be evaluated for its project execution plan and technical merit. In this section, we want you to know how you will demonstrate having achieved proof of concept, which is the evidence generated in a controlled or limited setting that demonstrates improved mental health literacy and or improved access to youth-friendly services. So proof of concept is, idea, is essentially the idea that you're planning to prove in your grant. So maybe that this app can increase access to mental health services, which then has a longer term um, increase in well-being. So in this section, we're looking for the following. What is the proof of concept you're trying to establish within the time frame of the grant and how you demonstrate this proof of concept has been achieved at the end of the period? And secondly, please describe your project execution plan for the 18 or 24 month grant period, including proposed project timelines, sorry, including proposed project activities, implementation strategy, data collection tools and methods, and timelines. Success for C grants is defined as evidence from a controlled or limited setting that the innovation improves mental health and well-being for the most vulnerable 10 to 24 year olds, evidence that the innovation can be feasibly implemented, sustained, and financially supported at scale in the target regions, demonstrated interest, financing, and or commitments for uptake of the innovation from key stakeholders, influencers, and partners needed to enable scale and sustainability. Funded projects must report on various outcomes and outputs. Outputs are the products or services that are directly produced, developed, or implemented as part of the innovation. So examples of outputs of the Global Mental Health Youth Seed Program focuses on are the number and type of outreach and awareness activities conducted, and the number of jobs created as a result of the innovation. Immediate outcomes are the short-term changes resulting from the innovation. These outcomes should be measurable and achievable relatively soon after the project is implemented and should be directly linked to the project outputs. An example of immediate outcomes um, that we are focused on is, for example, the number of young people reached through outreach and awareness activities. Intermediate outcomes are the medium term changes resulting from the innovation. These outcomes should be achievable and measurable within the time and resource constraints of the project and directly linked to the project's outputs. 
An example of this is the number of young people using their innovation to improve their mental health. The ultimate outcomes are the long-term impacts resulting from the innovation. Ultimate outcomes should be achievable and measurable by the end of the funding period. The ultimate outcome that the Global Mental Health Youth Seed Program focuses on are the number of lives improved, specifically changes in scores in at least one of the following. One, overall well-being, so a possible tool for that might be the WHO5, level of functioning, so a possible tool would be the WHO Disability Assessment Schedule 2.0, and projects focused on anxiety and depression should incorporate one of the following tools. Patient uh, PHQ-9, the Patient Health Questionnaire, Generalized Anxiety Disorder 7, G87, or the Revised Children's Anxiety and Depression Scale. All of these tools are available online free of charge and are suitable for low and middle income countries. Projects may additionally use locally developed measures as well. And all of this is outlined again in the RFP, so please be sure to look back at that. So in this section, we ask that you please indicate your expected results over the timeline of the grant. Strong applications will provide estimates for the number of youth that will be reached with the innovation within both time periods and tie expected results and impacts to relevant indicators found in Appendix B. If, as a youth-led organization, you will be opting for a third-party evaluator, please complete this section to the best of your abilities, so focusing on what you will be impacting and what you will improve. When we are evaluating these proposals, we will take into account the fact that you've asked for this third party support, and that will um, also be taken into account for scoring. So this next slide is about scale and sustainability. Does the proposed idea have a path and potential for impact at scale? GCC is looking for solutions that can be scaled up and project teams willing to do this. Your clear path to scale must account for the following. State of local infrastructure, society, social, political, and economic forces, capacity of the organization and its leadership, available funding and revenue streams, and other potential barriers to scale. You should try to leverage local systems for efficiencies and engage young people with lived experiences to increase the likelihood of being able to scale it up. For many GMH innovations, scaling up to the public system is often the most effective way. And so in this section, you may talk about creating connections and buying with relevant partners in the public sector. So in this section, we're looking for you to describe how you'd scale up your innovation and the strategic partners that would help support this. For you to describe the degree to which your innovation could be replicated in other regions for scale up and which additional regions or countries you would target. Describe any challenges that you foresee in transitioning your innovation from proof of concept towards scale up. Describe how your innovation will become sustainable. So what is the long-term market or public health channel for your innovation? Strong applications will describe the envision path to scale, describe the involvement of partners, stakeholders who can help the innovation scale, describe plans and potential to leverage or generate funding to sustain the innovation, and describe plans and potential to be replicated in other regions or countries. So this next slide is about um, budget. So these are the different budget categories. So under this call, we're looking for remuneration, so funding recipient employees, reimbursable travel costs, fees for subcontractors, um, reimbursable goods and supplies, reimbursable project administration costs directly related to the project, reimbursable equipment, and subgrants. So I just want to clarify the difference between a subgrant and subcontract. So a subcontract refers to hiring substitutable providers of technical services. So for example, a building contractor may hire a subcontractor to complete electrical wiring as part of the contractor's larger building job. Ultimate responsibility of completion and quality of these services lies with the initial contractor. Subgrantees are typically project partners who are invested or closely related to the project outcome and cannot be substituted. Please be sure to refer to the RFP for limits or budget allocations of subcontracts and subgrantees. Uh, another note is that indirect costs are not eligible under this RFP. Um, so as part of, you know, your application process, we do ask you to estimate sort of different cost categories um, under the RFP call. We recognize that things may change, particularly like with COVID, you know, you may have travel costs that may not now be happening that can be reallocated. So if you will um, just please provide estimates to the best of your knowledge, like as of present day, when if a project is successful in negotiations, we can revisit the budget and amend as necessary. 
Finally, if you are a youth-led organization looking for third-party um, support, we ask that you allocate $15,000 towards that cost. Um, and if that is not fully used, you can always um, reallocate that for project activities. So here are some key dates. Uh, we suggest that you register for Flux account by July 9th, which is coming up very soon. The application deadline is 3 p.m. on July 17th. We aim to notify um, application status on January 30th, 31st sorry, um, of next year, and we anticipate that the start of projects will happen in April 2021. So between January and April, we would be negotiating um, all the successful projects, and we hope that people will be able to start in April 2021. So that rounds up uh, today's webinar. If you'd like to contact us, please feel free at globalmentalhealth at grandchallenges.ca. You can also engage with us on any of these social media accounts and someone will get back to you. Our website also has a lot of information, so please also be sure to check that out. Thank you.